Kasapa's early years. Among those of the Buddha disciples who were closest to him, though there were two friends, Sariputta and Mahamagalana, who were the chief disciples of the Buddha. The explanatory pair of disciples. There were also brothers Ananda and Aruda who were likewise eminent fathers of the order. In order between those two pairs stands a great solitude figure, Fafali Kasapa, who later was called Maha Kasapa, Kasapa the Great, to distinguish him from the others of the Kasapa clan, such as Kumara Kasapa and Uravala Kasapa. After Sariputta and Mahamagalana had passed away for deceasing the Buddha, it was Maha Kasapa who held the in greatest respect and reverence in the order. But even after the Buddha passing away, Maha Kasapa did not become the elected head of the order of monk, monks, as it had been the Buddha's express wish that there should there would not be a, a supreme authoritative head of the Sangha. Shortly before his passing, the Buddha had said, that which I have proclaimed and made known Ananda as teaching and disciple, disciple that shall be your master when I am gone. And yet the natural authority emanating from the from Mahagasaba made him particularly honored and venerated in the in the Sangha. There were many factors that contributed to his permanent position after the death of the master. He had been praised by the Buddha as being equal to him in many great respects. He shared with the master seven of the 32 marks of a great man. He had only been only the monk with whom the Buddha had exchanged robes. Mahagasava possessed the highest degree in the 10 qualities that inspired confidence. He was also a model of a disciplined, disciplined and assured life devoted to meditation. So it is no wonder that he was elected to preside over the first council of the Sangha, which had been summoned on his urgent advice. It may have been on account of all these features of his personality and his life much later, much later in Japan. And Mahagasaba came to be regarded as the first preacher of Chan or Zen Buddhism. Like the first two disciples, Sariputta and Mahamagalana, Mahagasaba too descended from the Brahman caste. And again, like them, he was older than the Buddha. He was born in the Magadha country in the village Mahatika. As the son of the Brahm Kapala and his wife Suma of Devala, he was uh, he was called Pipali, and his father owned sixteen villages over which he ruled like, like a little king. So Pipali grew up in the midst of wealth and luxury. Yet, already in his young years, that was where was was in him to wish to leave the world worldly life behind, and hence did not want to marry. When his parents repeatedly urged him to take a wife, he told them that he wouldn't. He would look look after them as long as they live, but after their death he would become ascetic. Yet they insisted again and again that he would take a wife. So to confirm his mother, he finally agreed to marry on a condition that a girl could be found who conform conformed to his idea of perfection. For that purpose he shaped put a statue of a beautiful woman which had a bed deck with fine garments and ornaments and showed it to his parents, saying, If you can find a woman like this for me, I shall remain in the home life. His parents approached eight brown showing them with which showering them with rich gifts, gifts and asking them to take the image with them, travel around in the world of a human likeness of it. The, the Brahm that let us go to the Mara country, which is as beauty as it were a gold mine of beautiful women. They found a girl whose beauty e equaled of that image. She was Bada Kapalina, a wealthy Brahman, Brahman's daughters, aged 16, four years younger than Pafali Kasapa, her parents agreed to the marriage proposal, and the Brahms returned to tell their success. Yeah, Bada, Bada Kapilamni also did not wish to marry, as it was her wish too, to live a religious life as a female ascetic. Such did not wish to, such identity between her aspiration and Pafali's color may, may well point to comic karmic bond and affinity between them in the past, maturing in their present life and leading on to a decisive meeting between them and and a still and a still more decisive separation later on. When Pafali heard that he what he had not but more most unlikely had actually occurred, he was 
he was un, of course unhappy and sent a fallen letter to the girl. Bada, please marry someone else of equal status and live a happy home life with him. As for myself, I will become an ascetic. Please does not have any regrets. Bada, Capalina, like mine, as she was, independently sent him, sent him a similar letter. But their parents, suspecting of such an exchange, to would take place at both letters intercepted on the way and replaced by letters of welcome. So, so Bada was taken to Magada and the young couple were married. However, in accordance with their ascetic yearning, both agreed to maintain a life of calibacy. To give their expression to resolve, they would lay a garland flowers between them before they get, they went to bed, determined not to yield any, any sexual desi sensual desires. So this young wealthy couple lived thus happily in, in comfort for many years. But as Pufalo's parents lived, they did not have to look after the estate's farms. But when his parents died, they, they took charge of a, the large property. One day, however, when Fafali Kasapa was inspecting the fields, it happened that he saw, as if with his new eyes that he had seen so often, he observed that his people plowed, many birds gathered, and eagerly picked the worms from the pharaohs. It was this sight so common to a farmer now startled him. It had seen him forcefully to what brought him wealth. The produce of his fields was bound up with the suffering of other living creatures. His livelihood was purchased with the death of so many other worms, and other little creatures in the soil. Thinking about this, he asked one of his laborers, who will have to bear the consequences of such an action? You yourself, sir, was the answer. Shaken by the in insight into karmic retributions, he went home and reflected that if I have to carry along the burden of guilt for that killing, what use will it is all that well for me? It will be better if I give it all to fall and come forth into the sinner's life. But at home, at the same time, his wife had a similar experience. She too saw in a fresh with a deeper understanding that, his, that she had seen very often with him. Sesamum seeds had been spread out in the open to dry, and the crows and other birds ate the insects that had been attracted by the seed. When Bada asked her servants to see who had been accounted morally for the violent death of so many creatures, she was told the comic responsibility was hers. Then she thought, if even by that much I committed wrong, I won't be able to lift my head above the ocean of rebirth, even in a thousand lives. As soon as Pilaf returns, I shall hand over everything to to him and leave and take up an escape life. <laughs> when both found themselves of, on one accord, they had pale yellow cloth in play bowls brought for them from the bazaar, and they shaved each other's head, and thus becoming like ascetic wanderers. And they made the aspiration those who were those who are arhats in the world to them would dedicate or going for slinging the arms both over their shoulders they left the estate's manor unnoticed by the house servants when they reached the next village which belongs to the estate the laborers and their family saw them crying and lamenting they fell to the feet of the two ascetics and exclaimed oh dear noble ones why do you want to make us feel hopeless orphans because make us helpless orphans it's because we have seen the Three worlds to be like a house of fire. Therefore, we go forth into the homeless life. Those who were serfs, Pefala Kasapa granted their freedom, and he and Bada continued to the road, leaving the villagers behind still weeping. While, when walking on, Kasapa went ahead while Bada followed him behind, followed behind him. <laughs> Considering this, Kasapa thought, now this Bada, Bada. Pilani follows me close behind, that, and she is a woman of great beauty. Not some people could easily do. They, though they are serious, if they cannot live without, they cannot live without each other. If that is unseemly what they are doing. If they spoil, spoil their mind with wrong thoughts, such wrong thoughts, or even spread false rumors, they will cause harm to themselves. So he thought it would be better if they separate. When they reached a crossroad, Kasawa said. But uh, you take one of these roads, I shall go the other way, she said. It is true for us, a woman is an obstacle. People th might think and speak badly about us. So please come, go our, your own way, and we shall not part. Then she respectfully circumvented him thrice, saluted him at his feet. And with folded hands, she spoke. Our close companionship and friendship that has lasted for an unfathomable past comes to an end today. Please take the path to the right, and I shall take the other road. Thus they parted and went their individual ways, seeking the high goal of our hardship, final deliverance from suffering. This, this 
it is said that what the, that the earth shaken by the power of the virtue quaked and trembled. This is the end of the story of Ma, Ma, Makasapa.